Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the making of my one pound Antweight Combat Robot Blue Screen of Death. Uh, there's a part one to this series. This is part two. Part one focused on more of the design and uh, discussion about the actual um, components. And um, this video is going to focus on the making. Um, so here you're looking at a CAD model of uh, Blue Screen of Death. And... Um, this was all modeled in uh, Fusion 360. I can't say enough good things about Fusion 360. I was a uh, pretty average user of SolidWorks, and I'll say I'll, now I'll never go back. Um, you know, SolidWorks costs something like five or six thousand dollars for a basic seat. It's not backwards compatible. It uh, you have to pay for updates. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, PC only. It doesn't support working on a Mac. And so, you know, Fusion 360 costs something like $300 for a year, and you get rendering, cam, modeling. Um, it's, they get updates every few weeks that are totally free. So I'm trying to spread the gospel and, and would love it if other people were, uh, if this became the standard um, in the industry, because I think it's just great. So this was all on Fusion 360. I was cutting my teeth on it. There's, there wasn't a single... I had to, you know, certainly there were things I had to learn and, and um, it, it wasn't like plug and play. Uh, it's different from SolidWorks, but there wasn't a single feature that I didn't have to. I, anytime I was confused, I would just Google Fusion 360, you know, uh, create drawing or Fusion 360 split face, mirror feature, whatever the thing was. And there's a, there would be probably a dozen videos on YouTube about how to do that. Um, Lars Christensen has a lot of great videos. Also, that uh, uh, NYC CNC has great videos. So, um, anyway, a uh, little rant about that. But um, so here's blue screen. You can see some of the components and little the little uh, Bainbot wheels and finger tech power switch, etc. Um, the cam is great because, or the I'm sorry, the um, CAD is great because. So much of this project is was about you know, the constraint of weight. You know, you have 400 and, um, 453 grams to play with, and it's a real question of uh, where are you going to put that weight. That weight is a real resource. And um, so I made this uh, spreadsheet that listed all the components and um, all the weights so I could get a running total of what my weight was looking like. And I could also see what percentage of the weight I was putting towards, say, the chassis versus the drive system versus the electronics or the weapon system. Um, so this was really fundamental to the design process for me. And with the CAM, it was, or the, sorry, the CAD, the CAD was great because, um, you know, you could go into Fusion and uh, if we look at the chassis, I'll isolate the chassis, um, you can assign a material, so I assigned ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene with a certain uh, density or specific gravity, and then, um, you know, I could quickly pull up the properties and say, okay, this is, should weigh almost exactly 142 grams, and then I could go to my spreadsheet and put in 142 grams and have that um, factor into the weight. So the, the CAD was uh, super important for... Um, for figuring out the weight and where I wanted to put the weight. Um, it's also obviously very helpful for figuring out um, where you're going to place things and, you know, how, how much, uh, how much, how much of the wheels were going to be, be exposed um, and the design of the weapon itself. Here's a model of just the weapon blade. And um, you can see uh, Fusion lets you uh, show the center of mass and so I spent quite a bit of time with these cutouts you'll see these um, sort of asymmetric cutouts but those are there because this is this spiraling form and there's a lot more weight over on this side of it than here and so these cutouts are you know relatively precisely placed so this center of gravity is right dead center and you can zoom in it's within you know tenths ten tens of thousands of an inch. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Um, another cool thing with the CAD is um, just 
show you this cross section. And um, in the first video, I talked about the uh, motor and how I needed to support it. So this this shows that a bit more clearly. So here you're looking at a cross section. Um, the first thing to note is the motor. Notice that this is a 31 millimeter high chassis. Well, the motor is 31.2 millimeters. So I'm using the motor was really driving how tall this was. And it was a real struggle to try to fit everything within the height of this motor. I think uh, Robert on his crippling depression uh, robot also struggled with the height and sort of figure, fitting everything into a, a, a pretty shallow area. So I had the same challenge, different, but, but similar in spirit. Um, here's the detail that uh, um, the bearing and that spacer. So this purple part is a ball bearing. This is the little machine spacer that I'll show machining later. And then I had to machine a little shelf right here, uh, this tiny little shelf I wanted to machine on the motor. And um, so what happens is with this construction, the uh, there's a screw, three screws that go in and they hold down the bearing and then the bearing is holding down this spacer and then the spacer holds down the motor. So. There are three screws up here holding the motor to the chassis, but this I think is doing really the heavy lifting. This is taking a lot of the load in terms of preventing the motor from getting pulled out, ripped out. And um, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the construction of ooh, that's the construction of blue screen in uh, in CAD. After I roughed out the design in CAD, I made a 3D print of it on a Wellsbot Taz 6 machine I have. And uh, this was useful to just test the general um, fit of the drive system parts. Uh, I made a working prototype just to see how it would drive around and um, whether the drive motors would fit, how the wheels would fit, and just to start to get a feel for how it would uh, handle. I also made a laser cut prototype in acrylic of the um, weapon blade, I put it on this little prop balancer. This is for RC model airplanes, and it's a good way to check if the balance was right and it looked, looked right on. I then mounted it up and spun it up and um, started, to get a, started to get a feel for um, how, uh, how the weapon would work. Once I had the parts modeled uh, in CAD, it was then necessary to make the G code or the instructions that uh, the CNC milling machine I have would uh, use to actually make the parts. And um, again, Fusion I think is so great because it has all these different modes. So you can model in the modeling mode and then you can just switch over to CAM and it's got a whole uh, a CAM engine that uh, will uh, generate the G code. Um, and uh, again, I'm no great uh, uh, machinist or um, uh, Fusion 360 expert, but um, through a bit of trial and error and watching a bunch of videos, I was you know able to figure out kind of how to make this work. And it's very cool. It simulates um, what what is happening in each uh, step of the uh, in each step of the process. Here is the very first step where it's going to start uh, cutting out this shallow recess for the top armor plate, and we can then uh, fast forward. Uh, to the next step where it's going to do the uh, wheel well pockets. Um, I think I mentioned NYC CNC before. Uh, here's where they really help me. I mean, things like this, figuring out how deep you can go and how fast you can go. I was really babying it uh, for a while. And then I started watching their videos and realized I could really amp up my speed and my feed and um, depth of cut, width of cut. And um, they just saved me hours and hours of time uh, after I uh, after I watched the videos. So, um, yeah, Fusion 360 has been great for the uh, uh, cam side of things, and um, it's really cool because what you see on screen, I mean, it really translates over to the uh, to the actual part. And we'll see that right now. So let's uh, let's start making chips. So I started with a one and a half inch thick block of TVAR 88 glass filled UHMW. I faced that and profiled it into the uh, shape of blue screen. 
Then I machined this pocket and some ABS, and this was going to be a way I was going to fixture my uh, the block of material. This is a method using hot melt glue. Um, the pocket holds the part in place, and then the hot glue holds the part down into the pocket. And you just run around and uh, do a fillet of glue all the way around your part. Then I was off to the races machining. Here it is machining some wheel wells, um, hogging out lots of material. I think this part took about 50 minutes or so to hog out completely and cut away all the features. So lots of uh, material to get rid of. Um, but uh, it did the job and um, then it was on to drilling the holes for the motor uh, hold down, drive motor hold down plates. Um, I flipped the part over and put it in the same pocket and that gave me some reference uh, references so I could machine out the um, weapon motor recess and the uh, pedals to key, key into the weapon motor. Right? Just doing that now. And the nice thing about the hot milk glue is this, you can use some denatured alcohol. You simply squirt it on your, uh, on the glue and squirt it all around. And the alcohol instantly breaks the bond of the glue. And then you just grab a pair of pliers. And once you get it started, you have to kind of pick away at it. But once you get it started, it'll peel up and peel away and you just go slowly, but that bead of glue will just peel away very easily. And um, this is just a really nice, uh, very kind of handy way to, to fix or something down temporarily without a lot of uh, um, hardware or um, double stick tape or uh, other things like that. So you just peel away the last of the glue and then the part is, um, is released. You can just literally just pick it up out of the pocket and um, that's how I did both sides of this just using that hot melt glue. Then I was then I was off to uh, making the top armor plate here I'm facing some uh, T-Bar 88 and now profiling it. I'm using uh, double stick tape for this part. Um, double stick tape. This is a 3M. It's a 410M and it's a good uh, machining double stick tape and then you just pry your part up uh, with, a, with a tool. I did the same method, the double stick tape for the uh, drive motor hold down plates. Um, then it was on to the metal parts. This is the drive or the weapon motor bearing spacer and I'm using a double a, a masking tape super glue technique that NYC CNC talks about. You should check their channel out and you'll see how they do that. And it was really handy for this, uh, for this part. Um, then I needed to hold the motor to machine a little uh, shoulder onto it. So I'm using these soft jaws. I machined these uh, sacrificial soft jaws and that allowed me to make a nice fixture, um, fixturing method to hold my motor and machine in this uh, very small little uh, shoulder feature, but it came out pretty well. And last but not least is the weapon blade itself. Uh, this is 6061 aluminum. Um, here it is machining those uh, keying features that would key into the uh, dry uh, weapon motor I was using. Here's all the parts, CNC, laid out together. And last but not least, I battle hardened the motors with some epoxy. Robert Cohen talks about that on his channel. All the pieces came together really well and looked pretty cool. And again, it did uh, it did quite well in competition. Here it is fighting t and And um, I managed to, uh, to, to, to win, this, win this battle and um, went on to the finals. So there it is. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, uh, thanks for checking it out. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.